The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Long before the sex divided, there was the enveloping darkness. It was in this dark, humanity learned to trust the light, to run from shadows, and most importantly, to fear. Brutality and superstition walked hand in hand in this dark time, but also hope. Hope that the heroes of this age could hold back the monsters and illuminate the path through the shadows. The children of Cain are no different. Some run from the shadows, some turn to the light, and some become the monsters of legend passed down from one hearth to another. Their story is one of loss, one of struggle, and one of death. For what can survive in the wake of those that cannot die? This is what it means to be a myth made flesh. This is what it means to be a vampire in the Dark Ages. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Vampire Dark Ages stream. We here at McStavish Studios understand that some of the subjects that come up during this chronicle are problematic by modern standards. Our goal is to handle these kinds of situations in a manner that does not directly or indirectly glorify these kinds of actions. While we understand that we're playing in a world of monsters, that does not mean we must be monsters ourselves. Please also be aware that none of our casts are experts in history. That means there will be some deviations between the weird world timeline and the vampiric world. You can go ahead, chalk it up to the K Knight's influence on the mortals around them. And now, I hope you enjoy our story. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to McStabber Studios. Vampire Dark Ages, Glimpses of History. I am, of course, the storyteller, Shanky McStabber. And I am Mama McStabber, and I will be playing Elena Irvina Thorndotto of Clan the Sombra. I am Zachary Naldret, he, him. I will be playing Miguel Tanner of the Gangro. I'm Junie Van Esch, and I'm playing Peregrine McSullivan of Clan Asamite, but I'm supposed to be a Doriador. Hello, I'm Maddox. I will be playing Snatcher of Clan Nosferatu. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the Ravnos Archon. I will be playing Agustin Diego de Cartagena, Cardenal de la Cruz, Clan La Sombra. And first of all, thank you, everyone, for coming. Welcome to episode two of the first season of this chronicle. When we were last with this newly gathered coterie, they had traveled to Budapest there to, they were told to meet with a potential patron as a, a favor that is being repaid by their sires. Now, of course, when they arrived there, they met with as a representative, Tiburu. Of course, along the way, they managed to interrupt a slave auction, save the girl from, well, being sold to or taken by a kindred who was up to no good. We'll put it that way. They ran into another madman who proclaimed odd prophecies and then set his pack of followers on them. Of course, that wasn't much of a threat for this coterie because they just used dominate to cause them to kneel, cause others to trip. While Miguel there 
fired his arrow to knock the one of the torches loose, setting helping set fire to the crowd. But where we left off, the Curdery had gone back for Augustine and Alina. You went to the inn you were staying at. Miguel, you stayed in the stables, of course. And Peregrine and Snatcher, of course, they went and took up the hospitality in the town of a merchant's basement. But where we're going to open up tonight, it's the next morning or next evening. You all have gathered outside the gates where you have been met with. There's three covered wagons, two not loaded with anything that is for your transport. One, this course, is full of food and stocks for the ghouls that are going with you. And as for what's going with you, there are six guards, your normal retainers, of course, some drivers. Sharazina is coming with you, of course. And there's a batch of spare horses because each wagon is drawn by two horses. And sometimes you need to switch them out. And as you've gathered back together, I'm going to turn it over to you all uh, so you can discuss your plan of how you plan to travel. Uh, when you arrive, the, one of the guards steps forward, an old hard-bitten man, bald. He's wearing a leather jerkin that has plates sewn into it, it looks like. I'm, I'm Nicholas. It's going to take three weeks to get where we're going. We're going to be going to Bistriz. And then from there, I'm sure we'll be able to arrange the rest of the way to the pass that you're instructed to go take care of. Prince Radu is expecting you in the three weeks. We should easily make the time, though. Excellent. There's not much on the way there. Most of it's small villages, very tiny. Some, not even more than 100 people. There is one town on the way. It's a large town or small city. It depends on how you want to look at it. Klausenberg. We'll be stopping there during the trip, of course, just to... By that time, I think we'll all be ready for a night in a soft bed rather than on the ground. Okay, Senor Nicholas, uh, have you traveled these roads many times? A few times, yes, sir. Can we expect any opposition? It's Transylvania. The nights are dark, dangerous. We're a big enough group, we should avoid most of the problems. Most people won't attack a group our size. Normally, you only worry about brigands. And they want easy targets. Good. And if they are foolish, they will learn their lesson. Just let me know when you're ready to leave. We've already got everything loaded up. <clears throat> I believe we are ready. And Sharazina, she doesn't look, she looks over at the wagons and then looks over at the horse. And vaults up onto the back of the horse. As does, I know a number of you have retainers. Mm -hmm. Multiple of them jump on horses. Now, for some of their retainers are not skilled. I know for Elena, two of her retainers, two of her four, are not skilled horsemen. So they'll be riding with the wagons. Miguel, you're. Retainer is not a skilled horseman. They'll be in the wagons. But my, my retainer is the, is the coachman for his wagon. You'll be the driver for it? She. Or she. She She will during the day. Okay. Good to know. I only have one retainer now, and he's just in charge of the daytime activities for me. Not, not much more. He's just a friend from, you know, mortal times. As there are ample guards provided, my own 
bodyguards will take the day shift. Nicholas looks over. We'll be doing a lot of travel during the day and a portion of the night. We do have to stop before too long at night, mainly because we can't see well enough for to guarantee the safety of the horses. Absolutely. So we'll be doing most of our travel during the day. You will push on as long as we can, depending on the moonlight. So I'm aware of your unique way of travel. You'll be safe in the covered wagons. And when nightfall comes, you can either ride in the wagon, on the wagon, or even uh, use, if you can find a horse that'll bear you, one of those. Lena actually walks up to a unmanned horse. And There's a whole mm -hmm. line of them. And she mounts it. Okay. Anyone else planning to ride? Elena, uh, as you get on the horse, now the rest of you have, you know how animals react to kindred or to canines. Elena, the horse is not skittish at all. No. Horse doesn't mind at all that she climbed on the back of it. And it is a beautiful mare, and she leans down after she mounts it and strokes its neck and says, that is a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Peregrine will get on one too. I have animal kin. Now, Peregrine, do you have that same merit? I Not the merit, merit, but she has animal I kin. I have animal kin. Okay, uh, with animal kin, I'm going to let you roll because it's not automatic. Uh, intelligence, animal kin? Yeah, it works. Good. I, yeah. I got the nice um, one. Seeing. As a player at this table, that dice roll, I'm going to enjoy the wagon. You got a three. You got three successes? Three. Okay. The horse, it's kind of nervous. It's not really sure about you yet, but it lets you mount it. So that's a good sign. It's a good start. She'll gently just give it some encouraging words in Irish. Uh, the horse rolls its eyes a bit and chomps at the the bit that's in its mouth, but it hasn't tried to throw you. That's good. Augustine's wagon riding. And of course, just if there's trouble under her cloak, Elena does have her flail and her dagger. Expected. <laughs> I'm not, I'm expecting <laughs> you all uh, to have your weapons, even whether they're under your cloaks or not. This is, you're going through open mm -hmm. territory. Uh, there is nothing wrong. Oh, no, she's fine with, with looking weapons. unassuming. <laughs> oh, her friend's got her thing. You can see it. No, she ain't going to try with so, this So, Miguel, are you going in a wagon or are you riding a horse for now? You're muted. Muted. So his his wagon isn't really much of a, uh, really a covered wagon. So he's going to be sitting um, next to his ghoul. Well, they've got his... two covered wagons at your... Full covered wagons that you're right. free to use. For for nocturnal purposes, at least, he's going to be staying with his wagon. Okay. It's more like a cart. But, okay. Um, and he's going to have his bow across his lap. Okay. And then, Snatcher, your plan. I will also approach a horse. Okay. And instead of going through all this, I'm just going to lie to it and say, I'm of no threat to you so long as you bear me. And I just like give it a pat on the side. And if you need me to do some feral whisper shit, I will happily do so. You fucking cheater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're using whispers to the wild. So yep. manipulation animal, Ken. Yeah, go ahead and roll that. Any target difficulty? Uh, six. We'll use the base six for now. It's not generally a predatory animal, but it's, you know. What the actual fuck? Did the curse strike you already? <laughs> okay, I've made four, a note. 44132. Four, That's a botch. Yep. Horse lets you mount it. 
great. Snatcher feels confident that he has calmed this beast and it will be no problem. That's right. Though it does seem to be an intelligent beast by the look in its eyes. It's a horse. Of course it's intelligent. Uh I expect it to be dangerous, too. (laughs) It's a lot of animal, and they're very big. (laughs) So you all set up into the, out of Budapest, heading northeast into the wild. Now, I'm going to assume this is your standard as you're moving through the through things so that you're on horse. As you're going through the wilderness, you get to know all of your guards, the drivers. Uh, They were true to it. You do spend most of the day you spend moving and they stop for the night before the moon sets each night. They're obviously using what light they can, at least in the beginning. It gets a little more difficult when they get further into Transylvania where you start getting into the uh, large amount of force. makes it much more difficult to travel, even though you're on a, it's a cart path that has been well worn. The size of the trees do put a lot of overhead cover. And it's about a week and a half into your journey when you stop for the night, just pulled carts lined up at the edge of the road. They get a fire going. It's drizzling. Rain has started to come in. But they manage to get a fire going. Apparently, your guards are smart enough to gather dry wood, just enough to at least get a fire started. So far, it's been slow. The journey's not been exciting at all. You passed a few small villages, not much, but I'll turn it over to you to have a discussion as you are about halfway through your trip already. Now, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to ask around the table, how have each of you been handling feeding during this trip? Elena? As needed, she has been feeding off of non-combat retainers. Now, is when you say as needed, are you trying to keep from having any hunger or just no. keeping it manageable? Keeping it manageable. Okay. She will wait until they are somewhere more populated to slake all her thirst if she can. Okay. So, I'll put at this point, you're up to three, a week and a half in. You're at two hunger at the moment. All right. Miguel, how are you handling food? Or blood, I should say. At night when they set up camp, Miguel goes off and s- into the woods, hunts, uh, and takes his uh, fill before bringing the kill back for the guards to cook. Okay. uh, Give me, give me perception survival. If you want, you can give me uh, deck survival. If you want, I mean, I just want to see how, how lucky you've been. Okay. Well, either attentive or precise make a difference. Attentive would, Okay. And since he's hunting at night, he's using uh, the eyes of the beast while hunts to get a better look at things. Of course. Fucking Steve Perry. God damn it. Spot. Uh, hunting has been tight. It's been very difficult to find game for some reason. You're not quite sure why. I'm going to have you at two hunger as well. You'll get to roll for your second half of your journey again, so don't worry. I like to do one roll for segments to make it quick. Uh, Peregrine, how have you been eating or handling your food? Managing as much as possible. Um, She'd probably do the same idea as Miguel with, uh, with hunting or at least attempting to, but using more blade. So rabbits, 
small animals and then bring him back so he can okay. get the mother out of him. Hmm. That's going to be uh, go same as his role, dex or perception with animal kin or survival. Difficulty will be six. I just want to get a feel. You know, I'm not going to ask Two. you this every time. Two? Two. Uh, you manage to keep. You don't find enough to share, unfortunately. But you managed to find some, so I'll have you at one hunger. At the halfway point. Snatcher. When we're in, when we're in more, like, nature areas, just whatever rodents or vermin I can snatch up. Uh, most and of the trip is nature. You're out in the wilderness. Fair enough. And then at the if there's an odd time where there's like a town, maybe if I think I can get away with it. But for the most part, I'm not picky. Just animals is fine. As small as the <laughs> towns you've been going past, most of them have not even 100 people in them. Farming communities. Mm. As soon as it's dark, the windows are barred. Doors are shut. Nobody's mm. wandering outside. You are in the wilds of Transylvania. They're quite versed. And what happens to those who step outside at night? It's natural so, grumble about missing London and the idiots who stayed out too late. And so you give me your animals. perception or stamina with animal kin or survival. I think I'll do survival on that. Okay. And then you said perception? Perception or, dex or dexterity. One of the two. I'll do perception. Okay. Perception, survival... I'm guessing gonna... my specialty doesn't matter in this case. What was your specialty in this case? Eyes in the back of the head. No, I don't think that helps you for hunting no, small that's, rodents. That's more for getting snuck up on and Not stuff. unless the horse is going to try to donkey kick you while you're hunting. <laughs> I'm assuming he doesn't take the horse when he's hunting. Fuck I'm no. <laughs> I told it I wouldn't harm it and that I wasn't dangerous, which is a barefaced lie. Like, come on. At least you haven't tried to eat it. Now, you oh, know, well, if the horse gets understand. froggy, then we do eat it. <laughs> okay, I panicked because I saw one, but I'm actually okay. What was the difficulty one more time? Six. Thank you. And then tens count as two, correct? Yes. Okay. Or no, only if you have a specialty and you don't for this one. So. Oh, no, right. Sorry. So one, two, Five knocked down by one for the one, so four successes. Okay. You get more than enough for you. Uh, there's also a little bit left over if one of your other companions would like to knock their hunger back one, if they're willing to feed off animals. While I you think about up. that, let's get Augustine to get how he's feeding, and then we'll decide. Uh, I am going to take lessons from the elder... Uh, La Sombra in the group, obviously, and follow suit, uh, choosing to be very careful about my usage of anything that requires a, the Vitae. But I think, uh, I think I'm going to try to fend myself off um, until we get into larger sections of population. Uh, and then I will gladly use uh, command to make myself more allowable and let people think that they are consenting to letting me into their homes so that I may feed it to my leisure. Uh, the, the nearest place you're going to hit that you could do that kind of hunting is going to be Klausenberg, which you're told you're not far from at this point, thankfully. So that is useful. So for now, if you're doing the same as Elena, you get two hunger and Snatcher can drop somebody else's by one point. Anyone want it? Over. Miguel will take it. Miguel needs Hold, to take holds that. a rabbit out to you. <laughs> it's more than one. A little bit oh, extra yeah. during the trip. And I give all the animals once they're passed to Miguel so that he can skin them if he needs some more leather for anything. He's they're small animals, but. Loading his cart with leather. Skinning, preparing. Okay. Efficient little system. And the meat is still viable for the mortals to eat. It's actually better because it's been drained. Right. And you said you've got a smaller cart, huh, Miguel? Um, yep. Yeah, it's got room for supplies. It's got a 
sufficient tarp for him to in a little dummy system for him to hide in during the day for travel. Okay. And as you're sitting, I'll give you a brief scene so you all can complain if you wish about the hard travel. It is uh, no shocks on these wagons. These wagons are not pleasant, not remotely. You're before the age of carriages and all the good stuff. And it's raining now. Nicholas approaches the group of y'all as you start moving as they're setting the camp up for the night. We are about two days now from Klausenberg. It's not a big city. It's a very tiny city, but there is a an inn we can stay at. We'll be able to get some more feed for the horses, probably restock some of our supplies. Though we do have enough, we believe, to last all the way up to Bistras if we have to. Mainly, it's it's a great chance just to not sleep on the ground or a wagon for a time. Do your people have the ability? If your people have the ability to go all night, would that speed up uh, the arrival to Klausberg sufficiently? Uh, the difficult part at night is we can't see uh, the road as well, and we have to watch for ruts, holes. We don't want to risk the injuring the horses. And we've been lucky so far. We haven't had the wagons. We haven't broke a wheel yet at all. Which is rare for a trip like this, honestly. Normally, we have to repair a wheel at least once. If there was a way to guide uh, and one car through, would the others be able to follow without I mean, we could try it. Uh, as I've said, we've never moved as much once it gets too dark out. We generally, for safety's sake, build this big bonfire like we have going here. <clears throat> While you all are nervous around it, it also makes some of the other nasty things that are about in this country think twice. If you're really wanting us to push forward the Klaus push fast to Klausenberg. We can do it, of course, sir. It's not a problem. But we do risk horse injury, damaging a, a, a cart or a wagon. And I'm not sure we gain much in the, in the process. If I could lead without causing uh, and avoiding any obstacles, would the rest of your drivers be able to follow the lead without incident. We can hope. We can try it. We don't see it well at night as you all do. So, I mean, you can lead your cart through, but that don't mean the horse knows where to put its feet. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of an issue. But we can shave a day off if you want to push on ahead. I know everyone won't be happy, especially the drivers. Well, I um, suppose since we would only be halfway there, wouldn't do good to upset them now. Perhaps this is a better tactic to use when we are closer to our destination. And the train gets real. Real difficult as we get closer to Biztres, we're getting more and more up into the mountains of the Carpathians. They are treacherous. Elena is sitting as close as to the fire as she is comfortable for the light. And she is actually making a salve from tallow from the processing of animals and herbs that she had her ladies' maids gather in Budapest. And it is a salve that helps with muscle aches from hard riding. Okay. So, uh, using hearth wisdom. Yep. Intelligence, hearth wisdom. Wits. Wits. Okay. Sure. Why not? Difficulty, I'm going to use six. I'm going to use six most of the time because. And I do have a specialty of cunning, which should apply. Cunning? 
I'm not sure cunning will apply for this one. Don't you know what a cunning woman is? Sly or sly? No. Uh, slippery? Uh, cunning woman is a wise woman. Is that what you're going? Okay, I'll remember that for your wits application later then. I don't know what's more dangerous, like me and Junie's Malay rating or, or Rolin's tongue? <laughs> Poor that Hannah's is, ghost. hang on. Yep, three successes because okay. I got a 10. You've made some salve for sore muscles. Mm -hmm. It's basically in like a wooden trough, small trough that she can hold in her lap and she's made enough salve that the mortals can use it if they are sore. Oh, you can trust that they are sore. Yes. Considering... And she she delivers it to the riders, and she says, this will help with the muscles. The drivers in particular seem to like it, because the drivers, uh, they spend way too much time sitting mm -hmm. on, a, on a bench. And then she also tells the riders, if you are sore, rub these on your muscles. Okay. You all have any other discussions to do this night? She sits back down next to Peregrine and says, this ride reminds me of when I marched with my people to Marlin. How did they go? I meant the march, not the end result. I remember that. <laughs> the march was long. We had to cover much territory. But ultimately, at the end, Malin burned. Ah, oh, I remember you telling me that one. <laughs> I made you tell me that whole story in Latin to make sure you understood the language. Yes, you did. I remember. I never did anything like that. <laughs> the longest I went with from London to um, somewhere around this small little village called Paris. Mm. He had to be there for a fight. Mm. Eh, it was what it was. You How were you one of the best I'd ever seen. Look, you either do or you don't. You had such a will to survive. Especially when I made the fire go out. <laughs> he didn't expect me to pick up sorcery as I did. <laughs> that, that was the best part, especially when I could do lightning. I miss those days. Yeah. Well, so much for losing a bit, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He lost a bit and wouldn't pay. Mm. So a bounty went on his head. I don't remember who won me. Couldn't tell you anymore. Been a while. Yeah. But team found us in. Not surprised either. I am sure you have learned many things. Empires rise, kingdoms fall. Always. People don't change so much. Not yet, at least. Eh, give it another couple hundred years. <laughs> well, we shall eh. see. The dressings oh, might change, but the core of them don't. No, that's true. Because I wouldn't be dressed up like this when I was, what, a wee one. <laughs> Actually, I remember seeing you and your fine get up. And then asking, how do we do that? Because I had always been in and out of fights and such, so it was always leather on leather. I really no style of fashion. Yeah. And he had to explain the whole thing about the garments. Yes. I he remember. didn't like that one. <laughs> After you gave me a list of everything I needed, oh, that burned a hole in his uh, pocket right well. <laughs> As it should. Oh, yeah, he didn't like it much after that. Oh, well. I, I mean, I, no tears here. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm just, to be honest, I'm surprised I lived as long as I have. And to see all of you guys. I know. And it's weird. 
I didn't think I'd ever be in this state. <laughs> didn't even think I'd even get a chance, to be honest. I didn't think I would be what I am now. I really thought my path led somewhere else. And she looks over at the Revenant. Sure, Zena is caring for the horse mm -hmm. now that you've stopped riding. Mm -hmm. She is brushing the horse at the moment. It's, it's obvious. She is quite familiar with horses. And Isn't during, nice? I will say during, I'm sure during this trip, you've spent time speaking to her. Mm -hmm. One of the things that she's explained to you all is she comes from a line of noted warriors. Mm -hmm. And in her family, even the women are expected to fight. And she has said that she is skilled enough that she was not an embarrassment to her own family. Yes. I was like her for a long time. So what do you mean? The... Some see that rule most of this region. Aye. They invest in families and lineages. They have a process where they create a ghoul. And that ghoul is able to reproduce. And that child is also a ghoul without needing maintenance. That child reproduces. Their children are ghouls without needing maintenance. They will be stronger, smarter, And sure, Zena, who's not that close to you, her head looks over, and we live a long time. Yes, you do. Now, what did she say? She says, we live a long time. I need to learn that language. You will. Because that's what... I'm sorry, I... I keep languages in my back pocket. I want to learn that one now, new. I learned Arabic. And she speaks. Elena, you just realized she answered you. You weren't, you were speaking Latin mm -hmm. when she spoke, but she, she did reply. In her tongue. In Romanian, but you were speaking Latin. Mm -hmm. She already has an understanding of Latin. As I said, smarter, stronger, live longer. How do I get one of them? <laughs> y'all have she, fancy, she, she will be accompanying us for certain. She is I better like with us than at her brother's home. That's fair. But yes, yeah. I was the start of the Rurik dynasty. Truly, I was the mother of it. Because... What was it? What was it like being a mom? <sighs> I, I don't know. I never had the chance. It was the best blessing that the old gods could have ever given me. Do you think they're around still? I don't think any exist. Eh, Not with creatures like us. Oh, I was meaning your family, but... Oh, the family, yes, was... yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I still believe in the twat da da I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I didn't ever go to the um, that new one, that the, the all-fangled one that they're all talking about. Oh, yes. The what Catholics. <laughs> I had to convert to avoid marrying the Emperor of, of Constantinople. I was there. I know. I, I had him baptize me so he could not wed me because we were family under God. You actually <laughs> got me a hundred dags. And that, <laughs> a wee church. They were folding a bit. And all of them believed that you were so going to do it. And I said, I bet you won't. She won't. <laughs> I only was ever, ever married to me, one give me man. Give a shake of your hand at least. <laughs> she because does. I got a good fit of money out of that. I, only, was, I only ever was married to Igor. 
and he was an idiot. I refuse to ever marry another idiot again. Are most men like this? I've heard so many complaints. The whole reason I destroyed <laughs> Marlin was because he was an idiot that went there demanding them pay their tribute. And he was an idiot to believe them when they, when they first declined and then said they would. He went back and they murdered him. A fucking fool. He deserves to be dead. Yes. No. And then they sent emissaries to Kiev. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to convince me to marry the chief of the Drevilins. That doesn't gonna go well. <laughs> I, I take I take it he wasn't even going to chase you or woo you or nothing. Oh no, he was trying to convince me through his people that it would be so beneficial to combine our house, our tribes, and rule together. I know that wasn't what he wanted. He was a greedy bastard. Yeah, are you trying to like see if I have a gag reflex? I know, right? So I basically burned his first batch in a bathhouse. Fair. I asked him to send his best, absolute best, by boat. In the meantime, while we waited, I had my people dig a trench big enough for a boat. And when they arrived, we told them we would escort them in their boat so they would be truly honored. And they were escorted and placed right in the trench and buried alive. And I told the leader, because he was also an idiot, I never saw his people. They didn't make it. And then we marched upon his city, unbeknownst to him. And I requested tribute of a small bird from each house. I oh, attached no. sulfur to the birds, lit it, and sent them back to their roosts. <laughs> okay, so, so when you have a temper, eh? Remember <gasps> that your sweet words are more honey and, and, and not to believe them. And make sure I shan't give you no fire. You're going to return to tenfold. <laughs> she looks at the fire and says, It can damage me, but I do not fear it. Oh, that's just another way that I was told how to kill. I'll tell you something. In, in the, what, how many years I've, uh, hundreds of years I've been doing this. In the 20 years I was down there learning even think of half the way that they were doing things. Hmm. Opened up my eyes. We will have to talk about that at length later. Hmm. If you're, um, the evidence won't say, uh, about letting me know. I don't know my teaching or what I know. Awesome. That would be there's, very good. Yes. There are some things that men haven't, uh, shall we say, learned because the bodies are different. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Good times. All right, storyteller, we are done. Okay, so while this conversation <laughs> has been happening, <laughs> Miguel has acted heightened senses and has quietly snuck over to Snatcher. And you call upon animals. In the most basic way. I have not honed much of that technique. Most of it has been focused on hiding, and he gestures to his very average everything. He, By the way, for all of you, he has not let you see his actual face once. So you can speak to them, but you can't summon them. Is that correct? correct? Convince, yes. Call... Not as such. Perhaps give me some time to work on it. There are no animals around for you to call. That's a problem. Even if you could. And Snatcher, when he mentions that, you do realize you're out in the wilderness, Transylvania. You should at least hear wolves howling in the distance. None. 
no birds, no nocturnal hunter noises at all. There's insects. And that's it. You may have seen a few bats. The closest you get. You have the ability to hide more so than I can. Perhaps you can go a little farther out into the woods without attracting attention. I will stand up very casually and then walk around one of the covered wagons and I'm going to not quote unquote walk out the other side as I walk off towards the woods being completely hidden now. Okay. Although um, actually here, since this is my first time doing this one as well, this presence is unseen, baby. Ooh, there is here. no role necessary to conjure an unseen presence. Yep, and it does not say that it takes a blood point. So there's no rouse check damned. for this. You, Shit, you okay. rascal. So you slip behind? <laughs> then yes, behind. I just, I walk behind a wagon and don't emerge. You don't emerge. So you move forward ahead. As, and then Miguel would make his way over to Augustine after the conversation with Snatcher. Are you trying to sneak up on me too? Something's trying to sneak up on us. Oh. I've been thinking about your idea about pushing on during the night. Uh, what if we could, because you're a tanner, yes? You work with leathers. I am. What if we could create a harness for a torch of some kind that we could hang behind the wagon so every driver could see the wagon in front of them? There's something like that could be arranged. It would make Probably. your plan more yeah. profitable, no? When we reach the town, we should be able to get supplies to have suitable area to work on it. When there isn't something out in the woods watching us. I'm going to peer out into the wilderness around us. Do I have a sense of something watching us? Uh, you've spent some time out in the wilderness, but not as much as uh, Miguel and Sir, or Miguel in particular, but Snatcher's even got some familiarity. I mean, it's been pointed out to you now. <laughs> For many of the nights, there were wolves in the distance, never close, but always in the distance. There's none tonight. You haven't heard any at all this night. Miguel will kind of make notes of that and pass that information along in a way that is conductive to teaching. And we'll kind of sounds odd way of saying it, but point out the silence um, and explain what should be heard. Storyteller, does it look like we're in a good position to fall under an ambush? It's a road through the forest with overhanging trees. A lot of overhanging trees. Anywhere in this mess of a country would be a good place for an ambush. But as Nicholas sees you all conferring, he comes wandering over. My lords, you have something? It's too quiet. It gets that way when you get close to Klausenberg. Always. Every time. Has this been brought up to the people of Klausenberg, to the people along this route, Nicholas? If you listen to... The wind blow? No, what the people of the oh. Klausenberg tell us. They claim there's a spirit walks these woods protects the town from those who mean it harm. Nicholas, is, is Klausenberg claimed by anyone of our blood? None that I know of, my lord. It is on the border of Count Radu's land, though it is not in his land. I'm not aware of its claim by anyone, though Again, uh, the lack of wolves seems to 
trouble many a person as we travel through here. This has been a frequent occurrence. Oh, yes, every time. You never find wolves around Klausenberg. Not a one. Well, you never hear them. They have attacked people. Uh, there's even, the, if you believe the scared villagers, I mean, they're little more than serfs. If you believe them, though, the wolves come and take children from time to time, livestock from time to time. Really? Old wives' tale. I wouldn't worry about it. Anything that would bother us isn't going to come near the fire tonight. Perhaps. One would hope. We've made it uh, this far. Storyteller could, given the information that I've just gleaned from all of these sources, uh, would it behoove us uh, to have like a wits or perception and alertness uh, survival or investigation to see where I would uh, spring a trap from? Sure, go ahead. Uh, you, uh, whatever you want to roll, because I like to let the players pick. If you got something that you think applies, go ahead and roll it. Difficulty is, of course, going to be six. Alertness okay. is more for supernatural things, yes? Uh, awareness. awareness. Awareness is supernatural. Alertness is... Yeah. I will do wits awareness. Mundane. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do wits alertness. Uh, does my specialty of quick assessment count? Sure. Oh, boy. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Those haven't been invented yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yet. I have three successes. Three? I have four successes. Four is nice. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, uh, I yeah. was uh, I was off scouting, so I think I'm doing something a little yeah. different. Yep. Miguel, if you wish to roll something to, to try to get a feel for whether it's an ambush and you think you have a skill combination that works, go ahead and roll it. I like to be generous with the players. It's What's nice an, um, in the beginning. Sorry. Go ahead. What's an awareness? Three. Three? Not bad. I'm going on the animal thing still. Okay. So I'm going to use uh, perception and animal can. And I, I do still have heightened senses on. Yep. Go ahead. And I'll take into account the heightened senses. Five. Five. Very nice. The first thing Augustine and Miguel realizes the fire would keep kindred away, but anyone close to the fire is a great fucking target from those woods. Easily be able to sh shoot at anybody near the fire. But at the same time, because the fire's a big, well-done fire, even in the rain, it would also spoil the night vision of anyone out there looking towards the camp. So anyone lurking not in the light would be rather hard to to target. Especially if you are uh, with the way the wagons are, the wagons cast big shadows that you could stand very easily in and the light would still spoil it because of the shadow cast by the, the wagons. Now, Statue, you've moved up ahead. It's a well-worn track you're looking at. It's dark out. Hard to see, though. But there's nothing moving. You don't even hear like, you know, stuff always walks through the woods at night. You don't hear any of the rustling. Uh, I think I'll start looking for a different kind of thing then. Do I see any ghosts? Well, that's an interesting question. Let me see. I can roll for that. Let's see what we get. Maybe the locals will have some info as to why there's no animals around, because that's really unsettling. Welcome to the Thunderdome. Two this man is enter. a time when the shroud between worlds is a lot thinner than it is in modern nights. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more spirits, but you're also in Transylvania where the spirits 
run free quite a bit. There is a spirit. It seems to be standing over a spot in the center of the road, staring at the ground, just staring down at its feet. Dead center of the road? Yeah, a little to the side. All right, so if the cart just keeps going, it won't just plow right through them or anything? Um, no, it probably wouldn't. It's at the edge right. a little bit. Uh, if I had a heart, it would be thundering right now. But I'm going to watch it for a little bit longer and then start making my way back to everyone. All it does is stands there and looks straight at the ground. Didn't notice me at all? Nope. Okay, that's probably for the best. And I will make my way back to everyone. Okay. And the guards don't even seem alarmed by the fact there's no noises. They've The drivers are stretched out besides their, their wagons as the guards are pulling out dry tack and various preserved foods, smoked meats, salted meats. Did I by chance get any more of a description of said ghost or was it just vaguely ghostish? Young man, kind of far. you put him probably early 20s. Uh. His form had a, a slash through it. You could see a, a, a open wound that didn't close in after death. Could I have guessed if it was a claw mark or maybe like a sword blade wound? Sword wound. You've seen them. Sword wound. Okay. And I will, once I get there, I will walk back for the, around the same cart, but this time I will do Mask of a Thousand to get my bland face back up. And for that, I do need to I make do a, a roll. rouse check. That's correct. Manipulation performance. Well, you only have to roll first Fuck. your rouse check. Uh, manipulation performance, I only believe you need if you're trying to look like a specific person, but you do have to do a rouse check to do it. Okay. And now, because I barely do any of the regular V5 stuff, rouse checks with how many dice? Uh, let's see. It uses, I'm reading through here. Does it say, how much blood does it say it takes? Actually, I'm looking here. Good luck. Raise the difficulty. I don't see where it says it uses a blood point, does it? No, I guess not. It does no, not. That's... What's that, Zach? That's V that's V five that right. requires a rouse so check. So no rouse check. Need it in Dark Ages. Yep. All right, cool. Then I'm black to bl I'm back to bland, boring me. Slightly different, but close enough. Yeah, still local to the area and still forgettable as shit. <laughs> that's how the power <laughs> just manifests. And the guards begin to start to stretch out bed rolls. You all are awake all night, so they'll sleep while you're up and about. And I will actually gesture to all the canines around the the campsite and like pull them like, hey, come over here real quick. We do. There is a ghost standing on the road up ahead. Staring at the road. Head turned down, didn't notice me in the slightest. But it is there. What is it looking at? The, the ground. There was nothing at its feet. Just more of the road. It was off to the side. If we took the carts by, it probably would not even collide with it, unless it stepped in front. You can see them. Natural born talent. Can you talk to them? It is difficult, but they do speak with me. But I did not wish to interact, not with one that seems to be so deep in a trance. Who knows what it would do once it snapped out of it? 
The dead mm-hmm. carry much baggage, and mm-hmm. it is not always easy to avoid if you get mixed up with them. Who knows how grateful it might be if to those who resolved uh, the issue. Can you point out the, the spot in the road where it was looking at? Mm-hmm. Perhaps something is buried there? Potentially. It, whoever they were, they died by blade. There was a large cut across their front. Spirits tend to carry what killed them over. That is not necessarily something abnormal. There was mention of brigands. Exactly. But without all the animals, I don't think most criminals would be stupid enough to be out in this. Who's to say that the lack of animals happened before the brigands? To say that the reason for the silence is also not the reason for his current condition. Exactly. And perhaps the reason he is staring at the ground. But aside from the aside from the dead, I saw no one. I've seen nothing. Sensed nothing. But little brother, do you wish to check out if there's something in the ground? I would do. And I will pull out a small dagger. Okay. You go dig until to I, where I had to help. Directed you. Mm-hmm. So, um, go will go along. Um, but with Cynthia and Seen being an automatic part of yes. aspects, that's a, a perception and awareness. Yes. Since the unseen is definitely built in in this edition. Or it, or does it run it as perception aspects? Like you're rolling the. No, you don't get any bonus. The... Uh, no, it allows you to see things. You don't. Uh, but when you're going up against obfuscate, it's a straight. Yeah. It's not even a roll. Ob- so. Obfuscate is based on aspects. Yeah, straight compare. True mystery is based oh, on aspects. Oh, okay. It's comparison to aspects. So, like, I can't see you because your aspects is higher. I would automatically fail. If you pull up the description of aspects off, yeah. in mm-hmm. Foundry that we're using. The description of all specs actually talks about how it works for heightened senses. It's built into it. I added that to it to make it all easy. Right. It's three successes. Three successes. You fancy. And what exactly are you watching for with this? I'm well. I'm looking to see if I can. You see, see the ghost. Um, and I am going to walk over towards it. Uh, towards it. Yeah. Doesn't even look up. It's staring at a spot in the ground. And as Augustine comes over and looks at the ground, uh, the dirt's a little, it's been disturbed at some point. It's not hard packed like the rest of the road. Somebody buried something here. That's what it appears. Sir, is there something you're looking for? Do you begin to dig down with your dagger? Yes. I, I point out the difference in the, in the dirt. Um, this has been... Something was buried here, so this was not um, natural. It wasn't something that was just lost to time, so this could be recent death. As you dig down a bit, Joni barely, maybe... Two hands depth. And you come across. It's rotted. Hmm. Dirt covered hair. And as you move a little further, there's a head there. Good times. I I retract what I said. This looks like it might have been uh, some time ago. It's not, you haven't dug far enough to see if the head's attached to anything, but it's quite mm-hmm. clear there is a head there. Is the head from 
what I can see resembling the ghost. Hmm. The hair looks right for sure. Is this yours, sir? It doesn't answer. It just stares at the ground. It hasn't even reacted to them digging no. up anything? Wow. Elena's actually going to move closer and take a look. They're looking down a hole in the, gr in the road with the top of a head. Little brother, dig around the head a bit. I want to see if they buried him standing up. Claro, la melena, and immediately get to work. It takes a little bit more digging. The ground is, I mean, it's been disturbed once, so it's not as hard packed as it should be. It's off the road a bit, and you do start to come to shoulders. As I thought, he has been buried standing up. It's a good question. What's the question? Is earth meld, am I able to pull things back out with me when I accept the earth? Now, that is an interesting question. I know you can force your body down in it. I'm reading through just to see what it says. Hmm. I will... I'll let you attempt it. I have another way of handling this if you'd rather not dig, Augustine. I mean, I was about to ask you for a spade, my friend, but if you have something better, please. I am all eyes. <laughs> and you'll do your rouse check, of course, for earth melt. To pull it back out after using earth melt, I'm going to have you roll uh, strength and uh, protean. Elena actually curses in Slavionic. And then she says, this one was thought to be cursed. Did you pass your rouse check there, Miguel? I did, yes. Good. You did not get hungry as you called upon it. And for the viewers, while he's rolling, we are using uh, the V5's hunger mechanic system instead of the blood pool system, so you're aware, because I like the risk-reward better than <laughs> pools. How'd you get? Three? Three. That's not bad. You see Miguel sink into the ground. Then you see him shortly thereafter coming up. And as the ground is looser as he's pulling up with him, he manages to pull the body free. It's intact. Elena legitimately just takes like 10 steps back. It's rotten. <laughs> it has been there snatch. a while. But it is. In one piece, it does have a, a sword gash across its chest like somebody had cut it pretty good. And as soon as the body comes out, everyone hears the wind pick up from nowhere. I'm in lockstep with Elena backing away from the corpse, too. Just no. That is a power I definitely need to have in my repertoire, Miguel. Impressive. You can always talk. Um, Miguel looks back towards the ghost. Is it still there? It's not looking at the ground. Its eyes are locked on its own body, and its eyes are wide at this point. It has a look on its face. You would guess it's pain. And as the wind howls more, there's whispers in it. And as you listen harder to the whispers, you realize it's the same phrase repeated over and over. Put me at rest. I'm going to, at that, walk over to the nearest tree and start digging a grave. Now, if anyone would like to roll about the significance of someone being buried upright, uh, that is a stat with a cult. That's going to be wits. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you can go uh, Hearth Wisdom. Either one. I'll use Occult or Hearth, hearth Wisdom for this. I'd actually like to do either Perception or, and Wits uh, and Melee to see if this was a s- disciplined cut or a, or a wild cut. Go ahead. And can I do Intelligence and uh, Occult, please? Go ahead. Thank you. Will my uh, specialty of swords play into this? Yes, it would. You are a kind gentleman. Uh, I'm going to roll um, theology to try to figure out what religion and to figure out how his religion asked and he needs to be put to rest. Okay. Elena, how many do you have? I am using my specialty of cunning for this because this is a, you know, okay, wise woman, cunning woman kind of thing. Um, sh- I got five because I had nice. two tens. <laughs> And I got a five, too. Five for you. <laughs> for digging a grave, would that be strength athletics? Yes. Or, uh, I mean, I'll let you just assume. I mean, you can dig a grave. It's not like you're in a hurry. Oh, okay, we can cool. also get some of the awake guards to help. Yep. Oh, I I will definitely accept it, but I am personally making sure that this spirit sees El- El- Elena basically them. commands who's ever so available. We've, we've got a five and a five. Augustine, you are attempting to uh, see the cut. The precision of it. Yep. How many I did got you get? six successes on six. that. And Miguel, yep. your roll? One. One. You're not sure what religion this would be, but for Elena and Peregrine, this was actually, as far as you're aware, the Romans started doing it, though uh, they may have only been the ones who made it other people noticed it from. It was meant to curse the individual, to trap them there for all time. It was normally done to bandits, rogues, or someone who had... Somebody felt they needed to be punished even in unlife. Augustine, the cut was a single cut. There's no other wounds on the body. So whoever did it struck true the first strike they did. As you all see Snatchers trying to dig a grave. For five, though, I'll give you on five. Supposedly, you can break the curse if you don't bury him standing up anymore. Mm -hmm. Elena's going to take it a step further and actually take some of the water that we have. Cleanse his face, his hands, and his feet. Okay. Uh, Peregrine pulls a couple of things. I'll be honest. As you're washing them, bits of flesh are coming off with it? She's barely, she's doing it very gently. But she understands that in the state of decay. But she is going to honor the corpse. Okay. Uh, Peregrine will actually go with what you're doing and speak in Irish calling to the god Lu and uh, doing an Irish ritual, um, a pagan ritual, uh, and doing things over the body just so it can find its rest. And everyone's actions between digging the grave, cleaning the body, giving it proper burial. Basically, takes, right. <laughs> takes most of the night. Mm-hmm. But as the dawn is getting closer and your guards have started stirring again, you do finally get the individual buried. And as soon as you lay them and get them covered in dirt, the winds whip one last time and all you hear through the winds is a thank you. As the spirit fades from Snatcher's view, Miguel, who could also see the spirit, sees it, dissipates. Go in peace. And everyone would notice Snatcher exhale, like actually let out a breath. And as dawn is approaching, the guards are ready to get going. You move back to the wagons to deal with the approaching dawn. Right here, everybody, I think is a great place to go to break because we've just hit the end of a scene. I didn't expect the scene to go this way or take this long, but actually it was a great scene. So we will see everybody in 10 minutes. Please enjoy our break. You're welcome. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, What you missed during break was the cast talking about fucky wucky (laughs) and throwing motherfuckers into another motherfucker. (laughs) Um, which had nothing to do with this stream, but which I just knocked him into know. another motherfucker. Yeah. I just want to let everybody know that's the kind of shit that goes on during break. 
Why do you always have to out our behind the Because scenes it's funny as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker is. Yeah, motherfucker would. That's there right. you go. So with the coming of the dawn, hey, you sweetie, all have once ch- again- change the screen, please. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have it so she can see <laughs> the screen correctly. There we go. There we go. <laughs> the shanky responsible has been sacked. Yes. <laughs> this, hello, I am the storyteller. I am named Lennon. I'm a different sack. <laughs> so with the, the coming of the day, you all have slept in the wagons during the day, of course. And the rest, rest of the trip to Klausenberg, you still have never found out why you have no animal noises. But all your investigations have come to nothing. But after the remaining two days, it has been raining the entire time. But you arrive as dawn is, or day is ending and night is falling. You awaken outside of a, I'd call it a city. It does have a a stone wall around it, which is impressive, but the streets are muddy. It's barely got many houses in it. You can see the shops up ahead, though they're all closed. You can even see a dilapidated church in the middle of town. So while it is a a city-ish, it's not a very big one. But as you come out of the the covered wagons, there's two guardsmen standing by the gate to the wall. And they kind of, they glare at the group of you. Hmm. What's your business in Klausenberg? Elena walks up and says, we are merely passing through and need a bed for the night. Sign of the Traveler. Straight down the road. You'll see it. It's the only inn in town. She nods. And the guards and the drivers lead the wagons. They're hoping to get beds, too. You can even hear most of the guards talking about how it would be real nice to get out of the rain. And as you're pulling through the town, you'll notice that most of the shops, the windows are shuttered, doors are closed. Aside from the guards, you don't really see much of anyone moving around. Uh, The church, you'd imagine at one point, was nice. Though at this point it is weather-worn upkeep has been shoddy. I was going to check the church door. Are you going to take a side trip to, to go up to the door? Mm-hmm. It does appear to be a Christian church. Uh, you're guessed by the doors and the markings on it. Roman era. But given you're in Transylvania, you have the feeling it doesn't get a lot of use. Most of the people here are either following the Orthodox Christianity, which is a bit different from Roman Catholicism, or the old ways, of course. But the church is not far from the sign of the Traveler's Inn, and you can see that the inn it's in much better condition than the church. They've got a large barn and stable. And you can hear people talking and laughing from inside the place. The church is empty, Mago, by the way, so you know. Okay. Who all's going? Who's going into the the end to to barter for rooms? Let me take a look at my sheet. I can do that. I mean, you do have some <laughs> you have some funds that were provided by Radu, of course. Yes, and I, the- I, I, I do have a decent repertoire of social skills. <laughs> I'm okay. I can help. Yeah. <laughs> Assist. As you enter the place, the crowd doesn't seem to stop. They're still laughing and joking and drinking and carrying on. But the man at the bar, the innkeeper there, 
He does have a bit of a scowl as you approach. And he eyeballs your wet clothes from coming into the city. Bit of mud on the boots. We're full. No rooms available. If anyone would like to lie check him, please feel free. No, I'm not even going to bother because at this point we have been on the road for over a week and a half and Elaine is about done with bullshit. Um, yeah, so we are just going to freaking command that he clear out his rooms and make room for us. Give me. Yeah, you still going to roll this? Let's give a, I think an intimidation can work pretty Manipulation well Manipulation intimidation? Sure. Mm -hmm. You don't have any manipulation or yes, uh, any do. intimidation, uh, but got, you do have manipulation. I, I got two on the lie check, by the way. Two on a lie check? Oh, it's it's clear he's lying. There's not enough horses in the stables to count for all the rooms he would have. That's three successes off of four die. The eyeballs. And that is one of her powers. I know. I'm just. Okay. Look, you should just move on. Stop at the next village or something. The next village is days away. Do not make this difficult. And a couple of the people in the bar that are close to the bar, they stand up. Look at him, look at you all. The rest of your guards start coming in. Mm -hmm. And they realize they're clearly outnumbered. The guys, fine, fine. One room for you all, one for your body servants. That's it. Then he quotes a price that is four times what you would expect to pay. Oh, no. Elena will take out what is an appropriate price and put it on the bar and says, that's what you'll take. And she does not blink. And you will be glad for it. And he, with even bigger scowl, slides the money. Fine. Up the stairs in the back. First two rooms on the left. How many rooms does this place look like it, it has? Uh, your guess, maybe 20 rooms. Mm -hmm. How many horses were outside? Six. Okay. So I'm going to look at the nice gentleman that stood up, uh, walk over to them if they're still standing. They are. They're uh, holding cudgels in their hands, but not like pulled them out, but they get their hands on some cudgels. They yeah. look like his, you'd call them security. They're his, his bouncers. <laughs> his ruffians. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna come around the first one and just slide the chair enough so that it hits the back of his legs. Please, sir, do not hurt yourself. Have a seat. I am confused. Uh, it seems to me that uh, given the architecture of this beautiful estate, and I say that very loosely because by your attitude you have darkened the place at least two degrees. Uh, that you would want to have business so that you could continue to flourish. So it confuses me why you turn us away so vehemently. Are you not a man of God by any chance? What God? Which ones? Oh, please, you are talking to a reformist. Name one. I will tell you what I know. We follow the old ways, but we don't need your trouble here. You or your friend's trouble. And what trouble is that? What trouble have we caused? When your kind come into town, people end up sick. People disappear. We don't need any of that. No, we so, certainly don't need attitude. <laughs> Now, Melina, please, please. We have, we have misunderstood each other is, is the issue. This gentleman very clearly would 
throw any one of his fellow countrymen out into the street when they are sick instead of nurturing for them, clearly. Because he judges one person by the attitudes of others. This is not true. What is your name, by the way, sir? I don't mean to be rude. I don't think so. I'm not giving names to your likes. You got rooms. You've paid. Leave us hardworking folks free. Leave us alone. Do you have a family? Of course I do. Why do you think I'm not wanting your kind here? Uh, I'm going to call up my potent and just uh, twist the head around of the person standing next to me, one of his bouncers. Okay. Uh, um, you get your potent. I'm going to let you roll. Uh, uh, we could go strength brawl. We could go dex brawl. I mean, it's a more of a strength thing. So go yeah. strength uh, brawl with that. You got it. Uh, and you've got your potent, potent, so I'll calculate that in based on how many successes you get. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to quickening just for a nice little two die boost. Ten on that. Whoop, whoop. How many successes are you going to get? Let's oh, see. no, that's terrible for him. Uh, <laughs> I love how you said that. I got four. Got four, four out of eight, eight, eight dice, just so you're aware. Four. Yeah. You reach up, grab him, and you've got, I mean, potence on top of everything else. His neck snaps, and he goes down like a, a sack of potatoes. And the other bouncers, they move a little bit, and the innkeeper just shakes, barely perceptible shake of his head. And they back down in the innkeepers. How many rooms do you have available now? One less, I assume. Four rooms available. Oh. Damalena, please pay the man handsomely for this addition. She'll add some more coins to the bar. And you notice a number of the people in the place have gotten up, leaving. Mm -hmm. And... You are catching mutterings of vampire. Mm hmm Pretty sure that... Uh, she's not saying this out loud, but she's thinking this. Pretty sure they're not going to burn the end down tonight. Storyteller. Why, yes. As someone on the road of humanity, I just witnessed a murder in cold blood. Yes, you did. And I didn't do anything to stop it. You couldn't. You didn't have time to react. It was so quick. I still personally believe that that deserves a roll of some then sort. Then I will have another. you roll. Uh, we're going to have to do a conscience roll, I do believe, right? That sounds yes, like sir. a good roll. I'm sorry. Let's see. No, you're, you're not. You're your character, man. <laughs> Go for it. I don't give a shit. Let me pull up my, don't lie. my chart for that. Oh, I've got a ruthless. <laughs> Yes, you fucking are. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, since you brought it up, since you brought it up, I am on the road of chivalry. Um, I'm about to look up whether or not this bothers me. <laughs> I'm on the path of kings. I don't give a now. shit. That fucker is going to bend the fucking... Are you going to roll <laughs> your conscience against the difficulty of six? Just conscience? What level was the sin of murder for you? <laughs> I've got uh, it noted here somewhere. Maddox <laughs> Journal. I've kept uh, a track of that. Path, path six. Casual violation of another. I think that one would work, wouldn't it? Almost seems a little light. <laughs> it's not a monstrous bio act, so. True. He, you did just snap his neck. You didn't like rip him apart piece by piece. Right. Um, I don't know. To be fair, it's also that to be fair, that did commit the sin. Yeah, but and I did. I did. True, but there's I, still, I think, at, at least at this stage, enough guilt where he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck! I should have done something." I, I pushed the chair close enough so that he slumped down into it. I was not messy about it, uh, but also 
at seven on my road, behaving in an unjust manner would call for a role. I think I'm being at six where I am. I did not fail to come to the aid of another, especially another of my clan. So give me a, a difficulty six with your conscience. That's what we'll go with for this. Two successes. Okay. I'm sure you're not happy. But no. Snatcher has a horrified and kind of disgusted look that he's trying to hide on his face as he's more staring at the body than anything else. So you you all head up to the rooms. Now, you've got four now. How are you dividing the rooms out? If you want the guards to not be packed in like sardines, you'll probably want to give two of them to the guards at a minimum. We can. Or the guards and the uh, th drivers inside. Yeah, they can actually take at least two of the rooms, if not three. Now, you all could fit in one room. Right. I'm going to purposefully not be in the same room as the La Sombra. Okay. <laughs> A valid. If that means I go sleep somewhere else tonight, that's fine. I assume you're going to still stay in the, the inn because... Obviously, yeah. I, I'm, I want to be sheltered from the burning thing in the sky, but... Yeah, no, if it means I need to tuck myself in a cupboard somewhere, so be it. Do you all need a scene to discuss what just happened, or is everybody just, eh, another murder? I'm just curious. Elena tells uh, uh, her two guards to keep watch. Miguel? Your Was guards don't watch necessary? the door. They unfortunately had a previous encounter with our kind. And so I spoke to them in the language that they understood. We have extra rooms. I did ask if they were men of God. They were not. That is fair. But he cannot, he's no longer in a position to meet Jesus. At least not on good terms. He'll just have to turn around when he does. Quick, efficient brutality is sometimes necessary. I do apologize that you had to see that, Damalena. I, I will try to control myself in the future. <laughs> Little brother, I have done atrocities that you cannot imagine. And I did that while alive. What do you think I'm capable of now? I shudder to think. <laughs> And she settles in. And you Miguel all. And his Go ahead. School is, are, Miguel and his school are going to church. Okay. <laughs> church is empty. By the dust That's... on the floor, it hasn't been used in quite a while. Is there a confessional? Yes. It's falling apart, but it's still there. He's going to have heightened senses on to make sure they're the only two in there. You are. And uh, since there's no priest around to hear it, he will hear her confession, and then she will hear, hear his confession. Okay. She will go back to the room when they're done. Miguel is going to sleep in the stable. Under the stable? Under the stable, under the horse. Okay. He gets hungry. Yeah, it costs a bit. But I'll be fair. It's safe under the ground. You're used to it. But as the night passes, or the day passes, you all awake the next night. No one tried to burn the inn down. No one accosted you in your rooms. The guard said there was a bit of commotion downstairs and a bit of argument about what to do about the dead person there. But nothing came of it. I will leave an extra coin on the way out. 
for your troubles, my friend. I'm sure it must not have been easy to deal with. An example that had to be made that I hope we don't have to make again. Do we have an understanding? Just leave. Elena looks at him and says, Bury him with respect so that he can join the gods. He doesn't respond to you at all. Seems to be, uh, he might be a little upset. For good reason. But you got sleeping beds, mostly. Mm -hmm. The guards are a lot happier. As you set out, it's raining still. Dark has just passed. The Your wagon guards all have the same opinion. Nicholas speaks up for him. He's the, the one who does most of the speaking. We need to put some stadia between us and this hellhole. They are lucky I, I don't subjugate them. She. <laughs> what was that, Miguel? As I mentioned, Nicholas, I can lead the way. The roads are a bit better on this side. We can put in a good four or five hours tonight. It's in our best interest anyway. Nicholas, you said that this was not under Radu's domain, correct? Uh, that's correct. Radu's, Count Radu's domain is about two days' journey before we reach the edge of what he's claimed. Uh, Bistris is still about a week away before we hit Bistris. It might not be terrible to indulge his sense of expansion to include this area, perhaps start to create a more favorable atmosphere for those of our kind. Start to build bridges instead of burn them. You'll have to bring that up with him, my lord. I am just a guard who does work for him. Nicholas, don't sell yourself short, please. You know these roads, I value your opinion. I know these roads and that's why I do this journey back and forth, though I have a feeling I won't be allowed to stop here for a while, sir. I apologize. So as you're setting off, who's on horses tonight? What do you mean? I've got a perfectly well-behaved horse yes, right you under do. my legs. Yeah, Mike practically ghouled his horse already. <laughs> no fucking way. That's going too far. A ghouled horse? Where would I take it? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, wherever the fuck you want. It's a ghouled horse. <laughs> Miguel, are you it. riding the cart still? I'm still riding the cart. And actually, no, yeah. Uh, Miguel will, over the course of this journey, ghoul his horse. Uh, Peregrine, are you on a horse still, too? No, um, she's gonna stay in a wagon and just chill out. Okay. As you set off into the night, everyone on horses, please give me perception alertness. Difficulty for this roll is seven. Does my specialty of eyes in the back of my head count? Oh, yes. Ah. I am going to quicken for a two-die bonus. Ooh, I got a little hungrier. Seven, huh? Can I just flat out state that we're probably that Miguel's probably always got heightened senses up while we're traveling. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. And you said and you, you said perception and alertness. Standard diff, you said? Seven diff the seven. Time. Okay. That's four. Three successes. Three successes, four successes. This is... I would have had five, but I got a one. <laughs> yeah, that's painful. <laughs> I will say, while in the wagon, Peregrine would have heightened senses up. Okay, making a roll here. Hmm. 
So who has more than three successes? Elena? I got my three. Okay. Anyone else get above three? Miguel, how many did you get? Two. No. Nope. Elena, something's not right in this section of the woods as the carts are rolling. You think it's noises that don't match the movement of the wind like somebody's been moving forward. And then arrows start to come in. Now, Elena, because you get to act this turn, you can roll initiative. Everyone else has no action. All right. Son of a bitch. And for those that are uh, not the cast, uh, the cast now actually sees a battle map for once. To make sure they can see what's going on, because all hell's breaking loose in Foundry right now. It says I have initiative already. Let's see. No. Here, I'll hit the button for you. I just did. Rolling initiative. Okay, you got a... Uh, trying to see what you got, what it said you rolled. It said character already added to combat tracker has initiative already. Okay, hang on. Because I have no idea what I'm rolling for initiative. <laughs> well, it tells, it'll fix it next time. So, uh, I see what you rolled, though. Oh, I like that this is called Ambush in the Woods. There we go. That's not, you that's not initiative this nefarious time. 14. or anything. 14? Okay. Yep. Oh, I see. And as you said in there, arrows start flying in from the woods. And you, Elena, you can picture, Mick, you can actually see them. From your side, you can see four. Humans, archers, they've got bows, they've got cudgels. As they let loose arrows flying. And the very first thing you see is poor Nicholas. Fortunately, Nicholas goes down immediately. God damn it. In the hail of arrows. <sighs> Brad! You don't know if he's dead. <laughs> he just goes down immediately. Sherazina's horse gets hit, but not her. On the other side of the wagons, which guard is this one? Let's see. Bjorn. Bjorn. He goes down as well. No, Bjorn. <laughs> Fuck. I'm going to mark him as defeated. That's from the first two sets of errors that come. Elena, you can do something before... I'm not going to be rolling for everybody so you understand. We have so many people in this combat right now because of the guards and the attacks. I'm not going to be doing a lot of these rolls. Uh, we're going to play it cinematic style because otherwise we'll be here all night. Treat them as an environmental hazard more than opponents. That's correct. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise it'll take fucking forever. Yes. Because their own group has 10, 15 combatants that are combat capables. Uh. That that's your group. That's the friendly oh. fifteen combat capables. So what is Elena going to do this turn? Hang on, I'm looking at one of my things. Okay. Now the rest of you, you don't get to react this turn, but errors have impacted the wagons. It was clear the first shots were meant just to take out people. Now Elena. <coughs> There's still more archers haven't shot yet, by the way. Yeah, so. um, I am going to move towards where the shots came from closest to me. And while I'm doing such, I'm going to invoke shadow play. Okay. To draw shadows around me and from me as I approach an archer. Okay. So you spend one blood point. So it is a rouse. Mm-hmm. And now you can do better. Uh... Oh, and I am hungry. <laughs> so what I'm going to have that do, because it, the shadows will help you definitely with uh, getting shot because you're, you're a bit darker. It's, I'm darker, it harder to track. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and you've approached 
I moved you up even. Okay. Drag you around the map a little. So that's handy. Yep. And I will take my weapon and attack. Okay. Now you've activated one blood, but because you're generation seven, you can do two different uh, actions. Uh, or you can not two actions, but you could activate two blood points at the same time as you're attacking. Okay. So if you wish to bump your uh, stats up, yes. uh, you still can do a rouse check to add two points to one of your stats. I will do that. Okay. And I am even hungrier. This guy is going to get it. <laughs> and which stat do you wish to bump? Uh, dexterity will make it easier to hit. Stamina will make you take damage better. Uh, strength makes you do more damage if you hit. That broker. I'm trying to think. Um, I'm going to do dex. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're using the streamlined combat rules so everybody knows. And this is the first combat we've had, so yay! Uh, we're gonna... Well, that wasn't just knocking a torch onto a crowd of idiots. <laughs> right. So what we're going to do, and we'll pull up our, our tables here for combat. You're only going to, yeah, you roll one set. Let me find where it is. Yeah, and I am using my uh, mace. Okay. So what you're going to do uh, is you're going to roll your dex plus your melee. Against difficulty of, of course, six. So you, you know that. That's three. Okay. So it's strength plus two. Okay. And it's lethal, which is cool and all. Let me pull up this. The first time we're doing combat, I want to make sure we're doing it right. They're not doing that. You get more. Uh, just double checking the damage. Damage before soap. Yep. Straight. It's what's your strength? Two. So your damage is going to be four. That's it. There's no soap She's roll. just going to try to whale him in the head. It's only a matter of what he has for his, uh, for his soak rating by this. So you hit him. And you call, you clobber him pretty decently, actually. Causing him to drop the bow. As Good. one of his arms seems to be broken at this point. So it's going to make it very difficult for him to shoot said bow. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, the rest of these archers open up. And we lose, let's see which guard this one is. Verisov goes down. It's clear what they're doing. Casper goes down. They are clearing your guards from the field. Trying to find where Casper is on my list. There he is. Casper goes down. Half your guards are gone right off. They haven't hit any of the retainers, though. Hmm. It's also, you notice some arrows that begin to come from a bit further back in the woods. On both sides. Now, for the rest of your people, I'm going to take Elena's personal guard, Bald Hen. That's yours. Let me find the other. The other personal guard actually moves around to move towards you because that's what they're going to do. Augustine, your retainer is waiting for you to come out of the vehicle to fight beside you, as expected. But so far, the rest of your guards are up. And now we go the next turn. Everybody gets a go. So I'm going to select, where's my thing? End round. There's a thing for it. Go to the next round. As soon as I can find how to do it. There it is. Next round. Round two. We can get the initiatives of everybody else. Please, everybody else, give me an initiative. You got it. What's initiative again? Uh, it's on your character sheet already pre-calculated. In right, combat, it's a, right? Yep. It's, a, it's based off of dex. And I hit the wrong button. I, I asked because I'm planning to rouse. Yeah, it's um, uh, wits and dex, I believe. Okay. So if Plus I rouse, D10. So will my rousing affect the initiative? 
Mm, not this turn. Okay. So tell me what your initiative is, and then we'll I'll adjust you on the list here. 17. 17 for Snatcher? Okay. Um, so what happens when you have Dex and Wits at four? There you Jesus. Go. Uh, <laughs> well, I rolled low because of Astro. Uh, so I only got an 11. An 11, updating yours. Zach and Perry. 10. What's yours? Nine? 10. 10. Okay. Five. Uh, I don't, Plus I can't six. pull up my sheet. Yeah. Okay, 11. So 11. There we go. And now we have a combat tracker that shows everybody who goes. Nice and easy. If you want to see the combat tracker, you hit the cross swords. If you right click the cross swords, it pops them out so you can see them that way. You can move it around and still have your character sheet open. So, Snatcher, you get to go first this turn. Hmm. How bizarre. Mm hmm. Uh. All right, I have to do some prep work before I actually do anything of value. Sorry, everyone. Um, so I'm going to like get my feet out of like whatever harnesses or stirrups or whatever would be on the horse, okay. and I'm going to tip and fall off towards the wagon to roll under it. Okay, the wagons have definitely stopped. Excellent. And from there, I will unseen presence. Okay. You're going to jump up under, let's see, the back one is his cart. So you're up under the, the wagon that. Yep. That our, Augustine's Augustine in. was in. And, and once again, that's that. The archers open up. Uh, one of them swings a cudgel at Elena. Let's see how well he does. I need how many dice? I see. Okay. And what is uh, Lena's soak rating? I've noted it on your character sheet for you. It's under armor or gear. I believe yours is two. Yep. It's not under gear. Uh, combat. It's under combat. Soak rating is two. Yeah. You take one wound. That's it. Okay. So first track marked from the club hitting you. Bruised. Bruised. Yeah. <laughs> the other Which archer. Is to say you're fine. The mm. other one. He fires off. And injures. Now that one's dead. Nasir. Gets injured. Not dead. Takes an arrow. Now, Elena, you can go. I will. Hmm. My dexterity is still surged. Yes, that's the whole scene. Okay. You can surge again and add even more to your physical stats. If you I'm wish. going to add to my strength this time. Okay, rouse again and you can add additional dice to your strength. Ooh, that's a 10. I did not get hungry. Okay. Yep. So now <laughs> your uh, dex is at four and your strength is at four. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put those in real quick. Okay, uh, I would put them under temporary bonuses. Yeah, I, it's fine. I'm yep. just going to leave them blank for specialties okay. and stuff, and I'll take it back off. Okay. All right. So this is V20. You all can keep pumping stats for the viewers out there. Mm -hmm. And she could still use one more power if she wishes this turn. Or she could do it again and pump up some more stats. I am actually going to pump up my stamina too. Okay. Take another rouse check, because you can use blood twice a turn. And I did not get hungrier. So now your stamina is four. You went from strength dex and stamina two to strength dex stamina four. Yep. That changes your soak rating now to four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now she is going to waylay on him with her mace. Okay, so <laughs> dex melee. Again, now it's uh, five dice. Yep. For those unfamiliar with V20, this is why vampires are so dangerous in V20. They keep pumping their stats up four. higher and higher. Four. Uh, your mace comes down on him, pummeling him. And I got to find this. I uh, got to mark him. Which one is he? This one? Crushing his skull. Fuck, he's dead. And he goes down dead. Okay, well, now I got to pick another one because I'm hungry. <laughs> Now, as we're moving down, more archers fire. 
your other guard. Let's and they're going to be cowards and not for not once aim at any of us. Kalto moves up and engages with the one that's right there. No, they don't seem to be. Uh, oddly enough, the individuals, you don't, they're, the ones that are not in the groups of humans that you've noticed arrows coming from high up rather than low to the ground. There's no arrow shots coming out this time from them at this point. It strikes you as odd because in the first volley they shot, your guess is they were up in a tree. But they didn't shoot yet. Nasir wounded, but still moves forward to get in an attack and begins engaging. Now we move down Matthias, the other personal guard. Seeing as Elena has taken care of hers, he runs over to engage over here to engage one of the other humans. We're keeping him busy. Augustine, it's up to you now. Um, is there one near me? Um, Am I reading this right? Like this one is yeah. near me? If okay. you want to see the distance, I can tell you the distance. Watch this. 14 meters. 14 meters. Um, that's, that's a, a lot. That's a run. Okay. Could I uh, quicken my strength uh, and instead of running towards them, can I just pounce on them like a tiger? You gonna run and jump on them? Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the angle we're gonna take. So rouse, and then you can add two to your strength. Correct. As your undead blood surges through you. My first rouse is nine. That's good enough. Only one rouse. Are you doing it twice? I'm doing it twice. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm you're gonna go put it all into strength. Four four points into strength. Uh, so your uh, strength is up to six now. Yeah. As and your I, unbled I undead blood surges into you, so you get a little hungrier. You get a little hungrier. So this guy's gonna feel it. He's gonna feel I'm it. That is definitely correct. gonna. And you <clears throat> reach him. I'll let you reach him this turn and attack. But I'm gonna give you. a uh, difficulty penalty of two. So I'll make your difficulty eight, but you're rolling three, seven dice. Yeah, seven okay. dice. What's your specialty? Swords. Swords. So it counts. Uh, well, I'm not I'm not using my sword. Okay. I'm it's... I'm I'm literally pouncing on him like a tiger, and I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Then you're gonna made. brawl I'm, instead of merely so I'm going to bite. Dex brawl, then you get five dice. But okay. if you land a shot, mm, it's not going to end well for him. I don't think it's going to. Well, Astro might have fucked us. Astro, Astro fucked us. Uh, <laughs> Man, this cause... is the first stream I've seen where people pick on the mod as the cast. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. cause he's the one yeah. that cursed us. <laughs> I, I have three successes. I have a seven, eight, and a nine, and then I have two ones. So I have one success. One success. Yeah. Thanks, Astro. But we're using these rules. So you hit. Remember, we're, we're using the streamlined combat rules. Oh, you right. So your damage is six base from your strength. What is the rules? Let me pull up my table here for uh, what's our fang damage? Is it also strength, congrats, strength in this one? Congrats to Ravnos Archon. First time I've ever seen someone actually use their fangs in a combat in any vampire game ever. Yeah, we'll go with my, just straight uh, base. Oh, it's about to happen twice. We're going to go with just straight <laughs> base strength for a fang attack yeah. because that's still enough. Can that's six I... damage. Do I have enough control over it to not kill, but puncture oh, to you, feed? You punched him straight to crippled. Okay. <laughs> like I want to, I want to try not to kill him. I want to, I want to make the emphasis on feeding more than anything. You've torn a big chunk out of his neck, and blood is going everywhere. But you can just bite down on it and drink away. I'm drinking. Okay. Treat it like a water fountain. Mm -hmm. Crippled, I think, is good enough to mark this guy as uh, uh, down. I think. What do you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And. Given the, the heightened strength that I have and the potence, I'm going to eyeball the next target and just hug this guy enough so that he becomes my shield as I eyeball where, my, where I'm going to next, but I'm still drinking. Okay. Peregrine, what are you doing? She's taking up everything very quickly. 
and because thank God for celerity, uh, jumping out, yelling out because she knows Nasir's around. She'll say, Ermahat Ilja Bunny, death to the cowards. Use celerity to join Nasir in kicking that guard's ass. Okay. So with both her swords. One of your actions will be the move. I won't give you a penalty because of your celerity for the move. Use the first batch of celerity. But go ahead and give me your uh, melee and dex, please. And I've just pumped up my melee. Oh, yeah. Look at us using disciplines in a combat scenario. Hell yeah. Look at even if you don't have combat ability, you just pump your shit up and you do have combat and ability. And you do. <laughs> Magic, people. Magic. <laughs> That's seven successes. Seven successes minus his soak rating means your sword cleaves his head from his shoulders. Nice. As he goes down dead. Anyone still living? Miguel, as you're coming up on yours, this, no, not that one. Where's the other one? There he is. This one here is busy fighting. One of the guards. This one. Let me find the others. I'm going to make sure I get these two before we get to you. Where's this guy? Down here? Okay. That one. Perfect. That's the one I need. One of the ones on the south side throws. Pulls something from his feet. It's been smoldering in the rain. When he throws it, it strikes this wagon here. The one that you're under, Snatcher, setting it aflame. You're under it. You're okay for now. But you better get out from under it before you burn. It was already the plan. Miguel, what are you doing? Uh, I believe this is the one that just uh, threw the thing. This one right there. Yeah, that one's getting shot with an arrow. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, That's going to be Dex... uh, Archery. And I, as mentioned, I am going to be quickening. Okay. So the players are aware. I'm not planning to use this map for every combat because of the complexity of this one. I thought it best to put it on a map so everybody can see what's going on because this one's a bit more complex than what you normally will see. How many successes? No, I was just to see if I can get hungry from quickening. Um, And then what's the cap? Um, you can go all the way up to six on your physical God. stats. Or you can go above it, actually. You can go three above it. You can go up to nine, but it lasts for three turns. So six is you can do and keep a whole scene. Hmm. I swear yeah. it's everything before the V5 design that just feels so broken <laughs> oh vampires welcome. are broken against mortals it's fucking yeah. horrifying welcome, then, welcome to the black parade Matt, maddox what you yeah, got me Dale? I've, i'm definitely Hello. marching in this parade jesus <clears throat> let miguel talk then, please. so that is is my precise precise specialty coming into effect sure here. all right then that is two four six successes and it's a bow, uh, so that mm-hmm. it bumps it even higher, because bow. So it's plus two lethal? Yep. So that's enough to put an end to this one. Mark him. Slain. Now's where some problems come in, unfortunately. From high in the trees... You don't know why they weren't shooting at first. But what comes out now is flaming arrows from the north striking. Let me put a a circle on it here. This wagon. This one's already burning, so you know. The one here gets struck by flaming arrows from the south side. Setting all your wagons alight. 
you still have your cart, but it's not a covered cart, Miguel. It's got a false bottom for you. But you have many of your guards dead. I have Sarazina, other though. retainers that should be trying to put out some fucking fires. Uh, it's pitch coated, uh, and it's not going to put it out well. Uh, their best bet, since they're not combat, I'm having them avoid the combat so they're not getting shot. Unless you want them to get shot at too, and then we can go that route. But Otherwise, we have no protection. Uh, that is correct. Otherwise, I go marching back to that fucking city we just left, and I burn it to the fucking ground. Sherazina comes around <laughs> on her horse. <laughs> and Sherazina bears down using her horse. They're just barely into the woods. She's got an angle. Bears this one. From the back of her horse. She uses the horse itself to knock him over and then trample him with the horse. Because you haven't given her a weapon. But she don't need a weapon. She's got a horse. Mm -hmm. They're heavy. You've already killed most of the, the people here. Most. And as you're... Those wagons are burning from the east, the, or southwest, technically, the place you were coming from. You hear it's metal armor. Unmistakable sound of chain. Hallbrooks, you, suggest, you suspect. Not plate. Plate is not really used much at this era. Chain Hallbrooks are coming up the road. You've just passed down a number of them. As you all move to finish off the ones you were engaged with, your wagons are lost. Your stuff on them is lost. The guards coming up the road, the where are livery? Let's see. Anyone who can roll intelligence politics, please do so. Maybe you'll recognize the livery of coming up the road to assist. <laughs> What politics? Then so you don't do it. Are they coming? Are they coming from the side that I'm on of the map, or the other side of the map? They're coming from marking it here. It would be from the left side of the map. Okay. Can we just roll into? You can, can roll, roll straight intelligence if you want. Especially if you have there been you. in Transylvania at some point, you might recognize the livery. I mean, no. There's these, still these two wolf-headed looking things that are shooting arrows. At right. Us. Mm -hmm. And I'm hungry as fuck. But you can't. They're <laughs> high up in the tree right now. You can shoot at them if you wish. Yeah. Or I'll let you roll that in a second here. Those are going to be the ones y'all will have to deal with separately here. Four? What? Four. Uh, you recognize them. They are Transylvanian with four. Um, they, you don't recognize the exact livery, but they are personal guards of a it's clear it's Zemitsi house. What language do they normally speak? I mean, a lot of uh, German is the lingua franca, though they may speak Vlach or Romanian. She'll, she'll call out in German for aid. Okay. They're, they're fluent in fuckface. Anyone wanting, uh, Elena, you don't have a bow. You can polish off the remaining guard on the ground. Oh, I am going to eat him. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll move you over there to eat him. Okay. Uh, because these are mortals, this is not the V5 system. You can pull a full five blood out of somebody. Thank you, because that's what I need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All humans have 10 blood points. You can get a fucking five for a hunger system. And if he's still alive, I will fucking bash his head in. <laughs> See, oddly enough, that doesn't feel like it would set off any humanity. So they attack you. self yeah. fucking defense. Yeah. yeah. Mego, you're like, shooting in the these tree. people. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to roll uh, archery and dexterity. Your difficulty mm -hmm. is nine. Hit right. somebody in the tree. Well, yeah, Speaking I'm going to search that, by the way. Go ahead. Pass. Nice. Speaking of eating, how much do I get out of this poor... You can get... Well, you sap. lost some of it. I'll let you take three out of them. That's all I need. I appreciate you. I'm also going to spend a willpower. Okay. Yeah, we have willpower to spend. And for those that don't understand, yeah, this is V20. 
Uh, outnumbered. Nine? Nine? You said, you said nine. Yeah, nine difficulty. That's four. Okay. Arrow strikes and you hear I, from the side you're on. Which one, north or south, the one are you shooting? South. South? You hear a pain, a yelp of pain in the tree as you've hit them. But as your wagons continue to burn, the livery soldiers come up and help you polish off the rest quite easily, handily. Many of them, I'll let you all feed if you wish. Uh, just because they're down, most of them will put where they just couldn't fight, which means they're still alive. If you wish to finish them off, go ahead and drop your hunger. There's more than enough here to drop everyone's hunger to zero if you wish. Fine with that. Uh, are those fuckers still up in the tree? No more arrows come from the tree. The soldiers took them out. No, yeah. nobody got no, up no. in the tree. No, yeah, no, I hit somebody, but he didn't. I didn't see a body um, fall. There was so rustling and noise. Uh, so I'm shooting again. Okay, go ahead. I'm in the rules. We need to see a body. I'd also love to start climbing a tree of the yeah. one he's not shooting at. Very we'll start one. Climbing. Um, so someone is only two. Okay. This is with a crit. You fire. A snatcher, you climb up the tree. There's a small pot with pitch in it, smoldering in the tree. Whoever was in there is gone. I'm back down and I'll try to As you're coming the back down, there's a man approaching you from the up the road behind the soldiers. He's, let's be fair. Uh, there's something eerie about his beauty. A very mm, beautiful man. Let me pull him up and give you a full description. I got to scroll through. So many to pull up here. As soon as I can find him. Almost, uh, skin is almost like porcelain. Short, blonde hair. He's got a look on his face of concern. Glad I came in time, though it looks like you had it well under control. I, I did not get here in time to save your wagons. I am sorry. Let me introduce myself. My name is, I am Micah Vikos. Micah Vios. Yes. Is that city back there yours? No, that... You've run afoul of Mitru the Hunter, I believe. This is his territory. And from time to time, he gets upset that people cross his territory without knowledge of informing him they're coming through. Nobody knew he ran the place. Do you know where we can find him? running the woods somewhere at this point, I would suspect by how quickly you've dispatched his ghouls there, I would suspect he shifted into Owl and uh, left as fast as possible on the winds. Is he one of your line? Oh, no. He is one of the gangrel. Good. And she's going to basically gather up her people and say, we march back to that fucking city. <laughs> now, you are <laughs> by wagon is a few hours away. So going back, you're going to be pushing close to daylight. Mm -hmm. And I will rest in that city as it burns. Micah looks over. And I see you're kind of caught without transportation, without clothes. I assume everything you had was burned up in there. I have a few wagons that, if you wish to travel with me, I'm on my way to Bistris. I'm to meet with Count Radu. We have business we must discuss. Do you mind uh, having a detour, Sir Micah? I wish I could, but I really can't. Unfortunately, the business is rather pressing. 
Uh, but if you're wanting to get restitution for what was done, my suggestion would be to speak to Radu about it. This borders his territory, and I'm sure he won't be happy that, I assume since you're on this road, you're going to Bistris, he won't be happy that allies coming to his city are attacked. Are you, are you familiar with Count Radu? He is the one who called us to come. He will be quite upset that you were waylaid. We are best upset, Senor Maika. Way past upset. I can understand. You've lost a number of your guards. You've lost your equipment. You've lost your wagons, your transportation. I would imagine you wish to get justice done. But you must understand the land you're trotting on. There are rules to do this. There are procedures to do this if you wish to uh, get your vengeance. I would talk well, to one of the Zemitsi. One of us. These are not my lands. Not even close to my lands. Radu would be the one who could help. If you wish to travel with me, I'm more than willing to take your injured and leave them at a village and pay one of the healers for you. I can cover funds you need for clothes if you need to change your clothes. And of course, you'll have my hospitality. That is very gracious of you. Well, if you're going to see Count Radu, it's in my interest in a lot of ways, as I am seeing him as well. And it's not often you see a group of kindred just moving through these lands. Especially kindred I don't recognize. What is this term, kindred? It's this new thing that I heard from one of the Hungarians recently. I don't like it. I don't know. I like to use new things. I get different words once in a while. I know, associating with a Ventru, and diplomacy leaves... You with strange bedfellows, you might say. Hmm. But my hospitality is good, and I give you my word. Of course you would. As a lord of this land. I do not take it lightly, Lord Vigos. I am familiar. I am Elena Thorndotter, but you may have known me as or at least heard of me as Olga of Kiev. It's been many years since I've heard that name. Many, many years. You used to meet with various members of the Vovoide through time. Indeed. Well, it's good to see you walking once more and in our, our lands and your companions. I imagine some of the attackers have, have perished in this time. Um, Gal's taking this moment to uh, bury and remove items that they no longer need. But when you when you start to bury them, and Micah sees you you doing that, he actually directs some of his men at arms there to help you to dig graves, and he does it with just a wave of his hand. Help the gentleman, please. My companions can speak for themselves. Am I still hidden, storyteller? You're not under a burning wagon, but you were since the un you were unseen passage, so you're invisible. I'll I'll go back to bland me and approach. Uh, actually, could I have also gotten that thing of pitch with me? Sure, the small I'll little just, container of pitch. I'll just bring it up to the assembled group and just set it on the ground. He used fire. He does that. He's been a thorn in people's sides for a while, I am sure. Count Radu would love to make an example of him. 
your domain is yours, but you've got to allow passage. Otherwise, how can trade continue? How can alliances be formed? If you do not wish to share your names, that's fine with me. I, we have many nights ahead of us on the road. We've got a week. My apologies, Micah. Miguel Tanner. Nice to meet you, Miguel. I was not near when you introduced yourself. What is your name? I am Micah Vikos. Snatcher. It's not often we see one of your kind here as he looks at you. I will give a grin and respond with, truly, you don't see me even now. That's what I've been told. It's a rarity. I look forward to the infamous Zemisi hospitality. Well, both myself and Count Radu are gracious hosts. We are not at war with you. We are not currently battling for anything. So it's safe. Have the Venture made any headway into Transylvania, or is it still them being stopped? Well, now that their Council of Ashes has fallen apart, I'll be fair. They don't have much of anything. There's only four of the seven that they put there left, one of them being Radu himself. The viper in their nest. I've heard disturbing things of Nova Arpad, but... She still rules for now, at least. And I hold my hand out to have Peregrine introduce herself first. As you will slowly curtsy, the way a ghoul would, but knows where the level of respect is. Peregrine next seven. Yeah, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Senor Ricos, I am Agustin de la Cruz. I've heard both your names and Elena's very recently from someone. Yes. There was an envoy who stopped by not long ago. Lucida. She told me to keep an eye out for the two of you. It is good to see that our sire has connections even out here. I don't know what business he has her on. She wouldn't tell me. She is still in the company of that madman. I don't see, know what she sees in him, but as again, as I said, politics makes strange bedfellows, doesn't it? Would would any of us be able to extrapolate on what madman she's referring to? Augustine and Elena would know that mm -hmm. she's been in trouble lately for hanging out with Anatole, a Malkavian. Oh. The madman. Yeah, because okay. their sire has expressed his displeasure. Mm -hmm. She's sowing her wild oats and he's not happy. She speaks in Latin to Augustine. Little sister has her fancies. Sometimes the apple falls far from the tree. <laughs> it does look like your horses are good, and one of your carts did manage to survive, which is commendable. Again, Mitru does not normally fail when he attacks. I guess he, misunder he underestimated the sure strength you could put forth. But if you would like to, I will have my men at arms here move the husks of those burnt wagons out of the way. We can get your cart forward enough to join up with my caravan. We have more than car. enough wagons. It is appreciated. When you say cart, you mean Miguel's, don't you? Like his was the only one to yeah, survive. Yeah, he had an actual it. cart. Yeah. Well, at least we still have a decent supply of leather. <laughs> Actually, could we recover the wagons? Is there anything they're salvageable burnt, about no. them? No, they okay. burnt pretty bad. And what they're made of doesn't do well when pitch is lit on them. 
but I as mean, you're you taking, cover them, but the the, the frame is yeah is done. Black. It's fucked. Okay, yeah. it's it's charcoal. Great. If I still have my potence up, I will help. And there's, it's not hard to move them. Potence is still up. Potence is always up for Kendrick. You or don't have to rouse my, in this my surge. Edition. Yeah, my surge for for the strength. And the twenty five guards he brought with him. You all quickly bury the bodies as Miguel needed. When you get back to his caravan, he only had half of them come forward with him. He's running with 50 minute arms and chain hauberks. He's got six wagons, teams of horses, servants running back and forth because it's raining and they stopped for the night. Please, this has been a long journey with this many people. Uh, the back three wagons, they are empty. I will have them move to the center of the formation, of course, uh, to ensure uh, that we have no problems at all. And I think you'll be pleased with uh, the efficiency of my, my men here. My drivers, they do not stop. They will continue till we arrive. Were any of our guards still alive and treatable? Uh, your personal retainers, yes. Uh, the My rest personal of retainer them, didn't get involved. Sherazina is perfectly fine. She has been extremely silent, not getting involved. Uh, Kahlo was the only guard that was not wounded at all. Nasir took some wounds, and Micah Vikos has offered to drop them off on the village on the way to get them. Uh, a village healer to take care of them and to pay enough to make sure that they have money to come and meet you all when they're done being treated. Of the they guards... Are, they are technically Radu's men. Uh, yes, technically. Yes. But uh, um, Miguel will make that point, point out that what was damaged is and what and those that died were reduced. I will make sure so to that... properly bill him. I will make sure to levy a return set of, of funds for this expenditure then. Please, uh, if I can be so bold to ask, oh, what are you, you going to see Prince Radu, the Count? Why are you traveling to see him? If I may be so bold. I understand if you don't wish to share with me. Who am I but just one more traveler on the road? He has requested our assistance with something. Is he finally going to do it? Do what? He's been pressured recently to build a defensive fortification in the pass. That is his plan. Ha, ah, finally. I'm glad. And when you say in the past, Sherazina's eyes come up and she's watching very closely the discussion. We've told him for quite a while that we've heard enough disturbing rumors out of the East that it's best to have a way to hold the pass. What rumors from the East? I slept for a long time. The hordes are gathering. The Mongols are If I could spit, moving. I would. And Oddly enough, I know normally the tribes are fractured and scattered, but the disturbing thing is we're hearing that they've begun to unite. You are kidding me. Under Singer Khan. <sighs> so you can see where the fortress would be. In his interest, and, well, I dare say for all of Transylvania to be in their interest. I shall have to send a messenger to Roos. You said pass directly between two mountains then? Yes. Uh, the pass he's referring to I've seen a few times. It is very narrow, very limited how many can get through it at once. Perfect place for a fortress uh, to hold it. If you had a, even a small garrison could hold the pass against a large number of, well, large horde for quite a while. But like any fortress, of course, it's a matter of how many people are willing to throw themselves into the breach as to whether they can get past it. But it'll bleed them. And this is Transylvania. That's what we do to all invaders. We bleed them. 
and bleed them again. Make a mental note of that. Peregrine goes and picks up the only thing that survived was her bag of books and all of her bookworking stuff. Just picks it up and says, which one, uh, which wagon can we go into? And he motions to have, and they start moving because his, some of his men at arms heard him talk about moving him to the center. And three of the uh, wagons, covered wagons, are moved to the center of the formation. Uh, Miguel, if I remember correctly your name, Miguel, you can slip your cart here in the middle with the other wagons. We'll keep you in the middle around with the soldiers uh, providing security. That is a gracious offer. I do understand that for my own comfort, I do rather prefer to be on an edge. That is fine. I am the host. You are the guest. If you are the guest and you wish to have your cart on the edge, I will not argue. Thank you. Well, While they're talking... Oh. Go ahead. While they're talking, can I sidle up to, uh, I guess, Elena? Go ahead. Because at this point, Micah begins to go and start getting orders to get his men at arms back in uh, formation, get the horses pulled up. He's using it as a chance to change the horses on the wagons anyway before everyone sets out. So I will let this coterie of vampires find somewhere quiet away from the group that you all can talk. And I turn it over to you all to talk one last time before we end the episode. What is it, Snatcha? How much of what he said was the truth? I'm not good with people. I'd like to roll for that, storyteller. Of course. <laughs> Talk you to the people so. who were royalty or in like higher positions when you need like intuition about someone's like motive. Uh, Don't you're look going to roll, street urchin. What's a good one for that? Um, trying to think of what you'd want to roll for that one. I know it would be uh, manipulation is a good one to roll, and uh, wits is a good to roll with it. Uh, wits, you could do wits empathy. You could do. It's not expression. Whipped subterfuge, even if you're because subterfuge is about lying. Which subterfuge, if you want to see if you're teching, I will lies. do that. That is one of my best. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go with empathy then. Ditto. And I'm setting your stats back. Yeah, yeah, before yeah. Before you forget. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. There you go. And astral is bullshit. <laughs> Three successes. Three? That's, that's a, not bad. That's a five. Oh my god. It's not five. <laughs> oh my god. No, I got <laughs> You failed, to get, whatever, failed to get Elena. Whatever uh, Relin got. <laughs> How many did you get? So I got a crit. That means yeah, at I least got six. Two tens, two nope. nines, two eights, and a six. So seven? Yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> All of them were successes. <laughs> and to your best, best judging, he wasn't lying about any of it. Mm -mm. He seemed completely above board. He is being honest with us. He has business with Radu. He is offering us hospitality. Radu has been pressured to build a fortification within the pass. It makes sense if the Mongol hordes are uniting. And under one leader? Yes. Sure, Zena, who's not far from you. Milady. Yes. I know the past that used to be my family's holdings a few generations ago. It is a good place. I am familiar. I know of it. I never personally traveled it, but from... Kiev, we sent out for trade. If the foundation is intact, there's a, a hidden cellar under it. Really? It was used as a, a storage for family heirlooms that we didn't want others to know about. Really? Yes, my lady. What's she saying? 
there is a, if it, the foundations are still intact, there is a, a hidden cellar where they stored family heirlooms, artifacts. Perhaps it is best if we all learn Romanian. <laughs> Great. And we could teach she her speaks, some German as well. She, she, she does speak the truth. There's not. Well, she understands the Latin. She's not quite fluent enough to speak it yet. I understand some. Yes, you are picking it up quickly. It I am is, pleased. There are similar words to some of the other languages. Indeed. In Romanian, he will be replying to her. I'm sure you will learn plenty long as you stay with us. You saved me. I'm honored bound to serve you. But you are also welcome. Maybe we should rescue everyone who comes running at us. It feels like it would just lead to endless potential. Let's, let's not get too hasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. He is being an honest, and it is a good place for such fortifications. Well, then, for now, we can assume Lord Vykos is, let me see, of good character. For now. For now. At least in this exact situation. Mm. We'll see who wakes up tomorrow evening, yes? Indeed. Bolton at all. <laughs> And we might want to start counting the retinue. <laughs> I imagine it drops off sometimes. With the size of his group, <laughs> definitely would be easy for him to feed, even with you all. Yeah. There's more than enough, you think, to make feeding a bit easier mm -hmm. along the trip, for sure. Because he not just has the minute arms, he's got... Yeah, uh, all he, sorts. He's got furriers to take care of the horses. Mm -hmm. He's got wagoneers. He's got, uh, some of them appear to be hunters based on their garb to go and, and hunt food as they move. This isn't as extravagant as like they have like people like carrying banners and stuff no. and just, okay, no. yeah. The this livery seems like it's they an effective force. They wear, they wear their livery, but they're not showing any battle standards. Okay. It's different from how Snatcher <sighs> remembers military and set up <laughs> I, I recommend that you uh, find out if he has a particular group that he chooses to feed from or to empower so that we are not finding ourselves bound to him in more ways than one if you understand my meaning I personally will be avoiding feeding as much as I can um, you fed enough off the, the battle you just were in a week out, actually a little less than a week if he's able to travel nonstop. Uh, you should be able to make it there without... Without feeding. Without feeding. Mm -hmm. The remainder of the trip, at least. Mm -hmm. Fine by me. I am currently satiated. Yes. I still want that fucking city to burn. Don't worry. I'm sure Maybe. you're going to make it burn soon enough. Once we're done fortifying a pass. I will come Shh. back through with an army. We will have so much time. You will... Just dim roll that in no time. No worries. Make sure that you annotate where that village was, Peregrine, in one of your books. Absolutely. Me? You're the one with the books. Yes, you. Why? You don't know read? Or don't know write? I don't have time for that. How do you not have time? Doesn't seem like that useful of a skill anyways. There was only one sitting in the way to histories uh, of notes. That was Klausenberg. If one of us can't seem to remember that then 
we have bigger things to worry about. We don't know what powers this uh, Senor Vicos has, so I'd rather have some annotation made in case we do forget, like Miguel says, conveniently. So, For those that so have, a... are familiar with Transylvania, you'll, you know where his unearthly beauty has come from. They are not natural looks. So I'm taking it that I'm going to be the scribe for this group. Until you can teach more of us to read and write. Yeah. And numbers, so. Uh, Sherezina. Oh, no numbers? You can teach to read and write? Hey. She can. She is a scholar. She's saying something about what? She's asking if you can teach to read and write. And I, I said you all. can, that you all are a scholar. Oh, well, I, I mean, I've been doing this for over 500 years. I mean, that's why I was sold into servitude in the first place. Yes. Yeah. Such a good Toreador. I caught some of that. She has... She was in servitude for over 500 years before she received her embrace. If she can teach me to read and write, I can teach you all blah, the old tongue. Yes, you can. She says if she can be taught to read and write, she can teach us Vlach, the old tongue. Well, I'm not doing anything uh, until the sun comes up. I can teach her now. Michael Vykos, he's not on a horse, but he's walking, and he's looking your way. Are you ready, honored guests? We are ready. And Elena will go with uh, Peregrine and our revenant into a cart okay. <laughs> so that she can be the translator. <laughs> Thankfully, Mitra didn't name for your drivers. He didn't name. You have additional people with you. He was going for the men at arms and then setting the wagons on fire, almost as if he was trying to stop you from traveling quickly. Mm -hmm. And as this Right, because courtery... that would get us out of his territory faster. No, it would allow him to pick us off. Take more time dealing with yeah. Yeah. Dumb gonna dumb. Coterie sets off with a very hospitable Michael Vikos. And damn, those words make me feel a little ooky inside. It gives me the fucking shivers and not the good ones. Why? But this is a different time <laughs> and a different era. This as, is him young. As they travel with a monster <laughs> who has not yet hit the full depths of his monstrosity. This is where we're going to end. Episode two of our Vampire Dark Ages stream. Everyone this episode gets the base three XP, and I'm giving everyone a bonus XP, A, for uh, dealing with the ghost, and B, for uh, the thinking with the ambush. Here's your first combat. Give you an extra XP. So everybody can have four XP this session. Of course, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope the players enjoyed the show. Please join us on this Discord right over here. Go over to the Discord. This show was cast from the Discord, uh, so you're aware. Uh, Damn, this Sunday I'll be posting up a brand new casting call for a non-Dark Ages stream, a Modern Knights V5 stream. It'll be the infamous Kansas City stream that's starting up Chronicle. So if you're on our Discord and you want to stream with us, uh, there would be your chance. So please pop over and join us on the Discord for that. Catch our back episodes, not just of this show. We got the first episode, of course, on YouTube, but you can actually catch all the back episodes of All Our Vampire, All Our World of Darkness, Mage, with Augustine up there, uh, more vampire with Miguel down there. You can even see Junie get murdered in a vampire one shot. She's still a little salty about that. Um, you can see Snatcher, who was in Demon with us. We've got so much World of Darkness content and in independent stuff. Of course, you want to uh, get some merch, studio merch, pop over to a Zazzle link, get your merch. Uh, you want to see some amazing content creator, check out our friends. RPG table right down here. Ravnus Archon right over there. But we'll give a chance after the schedule for everyone to say what they're doing because I like to give everybody a chance to do that, of course. And so you, the viewers, are aware. Bits and donations, they go to the players, not to the studio. Bits and donations are a way to give something to the players for the time and effort they're putting into doing this and for uh, uh, to give them a little something for putting up with my shit as I ambush them. You know, it happens. Uh, right, because that ambush seems so difficult. 
as soon as everyone started fighting. This is a uh, V20. Kine are very rarely a threat. Very rarely. So, even ghouls. <laughs> even ghouls, yeah. <laughs> They're very rarely threats, especially once you can take time to pump up your stats a little. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. And of course, I'm going to turn it over now to my lovely wife. Oh, I didn't say, if you want to give to the studio, coffee. Yes. Subscribe please. on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> uh, comment on the video, like the video, subscribe to the video. Uh, all that drives us up on the search terms. So that's a good way to support the studio through YouTube. Now I turn it over to my wife so she can give the schedule. All right. So thank you, everyone, for joining us for our second episode of our first season of Vampire Dark Ages. Coming up over the next week, we have on Friday, with a few people here at this table, be Ravnos Archon and Juni Von Esch, Star Wars, 8 p.m. Eastern. Check it out. Saturday, there is no stream, but Sunday is the series chronicle finale of Windy City After Dark at 5 p.m. Eastern. Last episode. The last episode of our story. That's when the casting call get posted after the episode is done. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tuesday, I'm sorry, not Tuesday, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm just used to having, you know, World of Darkness Tuesdays here. But Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be back here with our next session of Vampire the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. And they'll finally meet Count Radu. Mm hmm Fucking finally. You got some explaining yeah. to do, I think. Fuck yeah. Yo, Radu, what we gonna do? Let's fucking get this moving. We're gonna do and then redo at Radu's. It's all the do. So, just follow uh, the do. Now we're gonna go around the table. Uh, of course, you know where uh, you can find me. You can find Mama over there. Uh, Ravnus Archon, what about you? Tell everybody where you, what they can find you doing. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, I guess I'm going to stick to this voice because it's what came out of my mouth. Uh, but you can find me <laughs> over my own channel uh, where I run Vampire the Masquerade on Mondays, uh, Legend of the Five Rings, and Werewolf uh, the Wild West on Tuesdays. And every other Thursday, I run 7C. And uh, I regret this voice immediately. But that's where you can find me, and here on Wednesdays, and here on Fridays for now. Bye. I Wow. I just That's your next okay. SPC for whatever stream you're running. Wow. Uh, 100%. Miguel, 100%. Where can, Friday. Miguel, where can we find you? Uh, uh, I can be found on my website, zachrolls.com. There's a link in the chat. All this stuff that I've written, you can uh, find links there. Uh, I am on the Bird app at Zach Rules uh, for the time being. Uh, I, I'm also other places but i don't actually go there you can find my name but most of the time it's me um and this weekend uh, i will be all over the place for uh well not, i'll be on two channels for the virtual ice Pass virtual con uh friday and saturday i will be over on rolling nomads and then saturday and sunday i will be at dork tales i think that's it. oh good old dork well, tales love dork tales so yeah, in, in like half of those games, I'm playing Scion. <laughs> four, four out of the six. Wow. Uh, so. Junie, where are you found at? I'm found on the internet because that's where I live. But you can also find me at the RPG table where I'm the storyteller for a uh, World of Darkness game every Saturday. Um, you will find me on Ravenous Archons every other Thursday for 7th C. You'll find me on Roll Call for DC by Night. And I am a mod on Cajun Knight Discord, uh, where we po we are play by post server for all your World of Darkness seats. And if you actually go over to McStabbers and watch Monster Hearts, which I'm on, that Reland uh, story told for, that Ravenous Archon was on, you'll understand the meaning of the no no square. No no square and disco tits. We're never letting you leave any, either one of those downs. I'm sorry. Mind you, I didn't say disco there's, tits. I just said the no no square. There's such a list of accoutrements that people have to like oh, sit through. Right there. <laughs> And, oh, and so you did. were uh, for Snatcher. He's in this game and uh, Demon when we come back for season three. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, wow, I get to suffer through that season. Yay. We haven't done a uh, punishing Clark. Sorry. <laughs> Carsador needs some more punishment. Just say, first of all, Carsador deserves it all the time. Yep. 
but Maddox gets tired of being a demon who's subject to God's wrath every goddamn day. <laughs> we can't help you with that one, trust me. And of course, everybody, as we always in these streams, mental health, everybody, it's not a joke, it's not a laughing matter. Take the mental health of yourself and others seriously. Uh, check in on people that you know that you haven't heard from. Make sure they're okay. A lot of people aren't, and it just takes a kind voice, a lifeline, something to help them out. And if you suffer from mental health issues like many of us out there do, in, tech, in chat right now is a list of names or numbers. You can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there'll be a professional on the other end of the line to help you out with it because uh, mental health is health. And while it's okay to not be okay, uh, that doesn't mean we want you to not be okay. We want you to get better and to, to get the treatment you need. And if you're in crisis, please use those numbers. And if you're not in the U.S., findahelpline.com. Go there, findahelpline.com. You will get uh, the places in your country. And now I can turn it over to my wife for her portion of this outro as we are melting in the studio because it's gotten really hot by the end. Oh, my God. I'm like dying. Um, and I'm yawning because I'm so warm. It's just it's a thing. Um, but anyway, anyway. Seriously, y'all, take care of yourselves. Get your vaccines. Get your preventative screens done because early detection saves lives for real, for real. So if you are due or overdue for that, please get that done. And if you are not well or you're overdue for a physical, get, get yourself an appointment booked and go to it. Okay, take care of yourself because as mind and mind and body are partnered and they work together. So if you're not taking care of one, you're not likely taking care of the other and everything starts falling apart. Said with love. On top of that, I'm going to remind people to please make sure you are registered to vote. Literally, charges have been pressed against Trump, but there is no rule saying that a convicted president, former president, can't try to run again. And Ron DeSantis is probably going to get charged with like some human trafficking and shit. But I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, I hope they get Abbott in that shit too. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's literally, it's not saying that people who are locked up can't run for president. That's not the Constitution. Yeah. So please make sure you are registered to vote. Make sure you vote blue when the election comes around next year, all the way from your local up to federal, for real. And I know not everybody likes our current president, but you know what? We got to vote for him again. We just got to. Because we cannot risk voting third party and losing it again to Trump. And also happy Pride Month. And happy Pride Month, y'all. Happy For Pride real. Month. Fuck fascists. Be gay, do crimes. Punch a Nazi if you see one. Said with love. Yep. Good night, everybody. <laughs> and this time, I swear I'm not going to go to the break. I'm going to go straight to stream over. I promise you. <laughs> he says I know. I almost, clicked. I almost clicked go to break. I, I bet you did. Here we go. Good night, everybody. Good night.